Hello everybody and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Last video we got started in the lake bed temple and we left off in this room. So we're just going to pretty much continue on starting in this room. So you can see we've got some stalactites and we've got a kind of strange looking cog mechanism here. So let's go ahead and let's shoot these stalactites off the roof first because we can't get any further in this room without doing so. The first stalactite will make a little bit of a bridge, and the second one will allow us to get to a second level of this area. So you can see this one creates a little bridge, it kind of stops the, uh, the flow of water there. And we need to get to the other side in order to get the item we need in this room. Now this is actually a big room, and it's got like floors almost. This is like the bottom, and there's a top uh, to it, and we'll return here a few times. So. Um, we need to come back to this room a few times, so remember its location. You can see there, we can hop across, and this is the chest that we need to continue on. This, of course, has a small key in it. So now that we've got that small key, we can pretty much get out of here. Um, there's not really any more need for us to be in this room right now, but like I just said, we will be returning later. Uh, what we actually need that small key for is the only locked door we've seen in this dungeon so far. I do believe that I showed it to everybody in the last episode. So we're going to actually have to do a little bit of backtracking already, even though we just got to this dungeon. This is a dungeon with a lot of backtracking and similar looking rooms and uh, overall just a, a little bit of confusion sometimes. So. We need to go back to the um, amazing staircase room that everybody loves so much. Go on right past that guy. And we need to find the other door in this room with the red staircase, or the red um, kind of lining outside of the door, rather. You guys know what I mean. There's only two of them. The first one we went into is obviously the one we just went into. And then the other one we need to go into uh, is the one with the locked door over here. So of course you need to get that key to come over here. And the red, the red-ish doors have um, a significance which you will see uh, in a little while here. So, get to explore some new rooms. You can see we're filling out our map here, slowly but surely. This is an absolutely huge dungeon, so uh, it's going to take us a little while, but we'll eventually get there. Let's just grab this chest while we're here. And it's water bombs. It's always going to be something useless and small, like water bombs or arrows or bombs or whatever. So, anyways, uh, we need to go ahead and we need to keep our... Uh, arrows on because you actually can see some stalactites on the roof. Uh, I don't think shooting that one down does anything, but I always shoot it down anyways. And when I was in this room my first time playing ever, I was so confused because that one way was blocked where the chest was and there was ivy, but it, you couldn't reach it, so it took me forever to figure out that you just had to look up and there was a stalactite there. I mean, it's, it's obviously simple when you look at it, but sometimes you just miss the easiest things. You always gotta look everywhere when you enter a new room where you're gonna miss something, so. Anyways, go ahead, pull that chain, which will create a shortcut uh, back when we need to go back. You can destroy that rock there, which will open the way to a new area. We're gonna go up here, though, first. And as you can see, this is the upper level to the room we started in in the video. Like I said, this is a big room because this is actually the top of it. This is kind of like the spinning um, cog part of it. I, I think that's what you call it, a cog or a gear. Uh, yeah, this, this top part here. So, be careful not to fall off. This enemy can knock you off, and if you do get knocked off, you have to go all the way back. And that's just a big pain in the butt, so don't do it. It's not smart. Not a good idea. And if we come over this way, there's a big water wheel that we can't do anything about. Although it looks pretty nice, can't do anything about it. We can, however, pick up this chest with a small key in it. 
Uh, you do want to probably do that first. I do recommend coming this way before you go through that area that we blew up with our arrows. It's always nice to have a small key in your inventory because you never know when you are going to actually run into a door that's locked. And if you have a small key, you know you haven't missed anything, so... Now we can go on this way. I'm gonna completely ignore these guys. They're more of a pain in my butt than anything else. In this room, we see this weird looking uh, enemy. I don't really know what that is. Is that supposed to be like a bug or something? It kind of looks like a bug. Um, you can just use a regular arrow, but I don't really see the harm in wasting a, uh, a bomb arrow. It's not like I'm going to run out of bombs or anything. So anyway, go ahead and uh, destroy that guy. There's a door here. We'll go there later. But you can see we need uh, that key to unlock this door. And this is actually where we want to go. And in here, you will see a big empty chamber, a chain that is taunting us and uh, a big sort of area we can walk up so this is going to show you guys the purpose of these rooms that have the uh, red trimming on it uh, you need to actually go into all three of these rooms in order to get access to the big door so it is very much mandatory and this is um, <laughs> a big staircase with pretty much nothing on it there's a few tectites uh, but nothing too crazy, you basically just walk a long ways all the way up. But it will get more fun on the way down, trust me. You can see on the map it's just a big sort of spirally thing. It's kind of interesting. And then at the end we have a small chest. Well, we came all that way for a small chest, that would really suck a whole hell of a lot with more water bombs that we do not need but oh well I guess it filled it up for us uh, there is a chest there but we actually can't grab it right now we don't have um, the means of doing so so you want to do is you want to crawl up here and you want to go ahead and you want to pull this chain and you'll see it will uh, release the water and it will make a sort of water slide so yeah the way down is way funner because now you can see Link gets to go down a gigantic sort of water slide and this water is going to of course uh, go into the big empty chamber that was there when we uh, entered the room Whee! oh that looks like so much fun all right and now we are able to gain access to that chain. And I always do that. I always go to press A to like dash. But when you're wearing Zora armor, you will always dive underwater. And it totally screws me up every single time. But anyways. So yeah, so go ahead and you want to pull that chain. And you will see now that the water will flow through. Um, and this will actually go all the way to the main room. And that's exactly what you want. So... Mission accomplished in this room. We'll go back to the main room and uh, the main chamber with all the staircases and we'll see uh, what it's done in a little while. Uh, this door here. Let's go on through here, ignoring those guys again because they're just a total waste of my time. We'll bring us back here and if you come back to the top part of the uh, cog area you'll see that by activating the water you actually cause the little uh, cog platforms to spin. Now I don't know why the water causes it to do that. I don't know why. I guess you can see there's like a big uh, sort of waterfall flowing. I don't actually know if that waterfall was there before or not. I don't remember but for some reason, the water makes this area spin, which is kind of random, but uh, definitely useful. And you will definitely uh, need to do this in order to make it further in this dungeon. So, now I just have to very, very, very patiently wait for these uh, little platforms to slowly spin its way around. Why does everything in this game move slowly? Link climbs very slowly in these platforms come around very slowly oh well all right so now that we're in this room there's a big uh, 
black area, a big black area we haven't gone to, but I'm not actually going to go there because there's no point. We're actually going to get to that room uh, by completely a different means. So don't worry about that. We're going to go to that in just a moment. I'm just going to grab that key because we will be needing that. And our next destination is actually that big room that I just skipped. So go ahead, grab that key, and then we're actually going to go into this door which is kind of neat. You go into one room, grab the key, wait, go to another, and then you use the key, so. You'll see it kind of brings you to like a different part um, of the map, but it kind of leads to that big room we need to go to. Interesting. All right. So you'll see that it brings us to a chamber, and this is how we're actually going to get into that big room I skipped before. Sneaky, sneaky game. They put in an underwater chamber. And I'm just gonna quickly grab this chest. I actually don't know what's in here. Probably rupees or something. Yeah, 20 rupees. They put 20 rupees in a big chest. That's so misleading and boring, but whatever. I'm gonna try to avoid all these jellyfish. Go ahead and blow this up. Run, Link! Get away from the bomb! And I think I actually hit that jellyfish, too. Except for that he didn't die, he just kind of gets stunned for a moment. It would be kind of awesome if it just randomly exploded or something. Would make my life a whole hell of a lot easier. But now you can see, once you've blown that up, uh, when you surface, you will surface into that big room. Ah, you see? Uh, the other way into that room is over there. And if I would have came in through there, it would have been a dead end. So that's why I wanted to come in this way. You have to go through the tunnel in order to get into this room. And... There's tadpoles? Wait, that's that's not right. Uh... Okay. That, that looks a little more, uh... A little more politically correct in terms of a mini-boss, because I think this room... Uh, definitely smells the mini boss material, so I don't know what this thing is. I think it's a frog, and it's got eyeball tadpole baby things crawling off. These things are so ugly and creepy, but, anyways, uh, this is a very easy boss battle, actually, or mini boss battle, rather. So all you have to do is go ahead, um, and you have to kill all of the little tadpoles that comes off this frog's body. It will jump into the air and attempt to squish you. All you gotta do is roll out of the way. It will fall on its belly, stick out its tongue, and all you have to do is attack the tongue. And that is it. That is its only attack. It cannot hurt you in any other way. Um, these, these tadpoles are quite annoying. I wish I had a lot of arrows, because if I had a lot of arrows, what I would do is I would just kind of pick them all off one at a time with my arrows, and I think that'd be a lot easier. Uh, spin attacks work pretty well, too. You can just kind of, you know, charge up a spin attack, go ahead, unleash it, and a bunch of them will die all at once. And I think you have to do this three times or so. So, last time, we'll be able to do this, and it should finish the boss up. If he does fall on you, what's gonna happen is he's gonna crush poor Link. I mean, it, it, it's a big frog, you know, whatever the hell it is. So Link will actually just kind of spend the turn trying to get out from under his body and you won't get the chance to attack it. So, it just prolongs the battle further, but overall it's not too damaging or anything, so just try to stay out of its way the best you can. Like I said, really not difficult. And there we go. Ugh. Blank, are you sure you want to pick that up? Do you want some gloves or some sanitizing wipe or something before you touch that treasure chest? Because I know I would. Ah, hell. Let's see what's in it. The anticipation is killing me. What is it? What's our dungeon name? Ha ha ha. <gasps> it's the claw shot, which is the coolest item I, I think ever. It is essentially the hookshot slash longshot 
of this game except they have upgraded it and made it so much cooler so link wears it on his hand uh in this game because it's the gamecube version he will wear it on his left hand in the wii version he would wear it on his right and what you can do of course just like the gale boomerang uh, you go ahead latch on to things that will give you the little yellow target uh once you've latched on go ahead go up hit your target and not only does it grapple onto things like it should but you can also uh, move Link in any direction you want you can move him up and down as well uh, and things like that so it is like definitely super cool it's probably one of my favorite Zelda items uh, definitely my favorite item of this game and definitely one of my more favorite items um, of any Zelda game ever so I think that is a great place to stop uh, by getting our dungeon item. Now that we've done that, there's going to be a lot of possibilities and we're going to be able to uh, finish up this dungeon. It's going to take a while, but uh, we will be able to finish it soon. And these enemies are now also really, really easy to defeat because you can just take off their armor, expose their bodies, and you can hurt them. Uh, you can also throw their armor at them, which is... Um, amusing and I, I don't know what purpose it serves other than you know just to be silly but yeah <laughs> anyways I'm just rambling at this point um, so yeah like I said I will meet you guys in the next video now that we've got our claw shot we can hurry up and get the heck out of this temple so thank you so very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video